Hey guys, it's Gary here. Uh, what we're doing today is we're ranking Blink-182 albums in my bloody opinion, because that's the only one that matters, as you all well know. Now, I'm not going to have my camera on today. We're just going to be ranking this within the tier ranking app, uh, which is a pretty handy thing. I just uh, I just downloaded it a couple of days ago. I've seen a lot of guys on YouTube using these, um, and I just fancied doing one myself. So, as you can see, we've got... Um, I mean, a lot of the guys will just use the uh, preset tier uh, names, which is usually just A, B, C, D, E, F, blah, blah, blah. But I've, uh, as you can see, I've changed mine to from bottom to top, don't bother, super fans only, experimental, give them a spin, required listening, and God tier. Now, any Blink fans out there are probably going to know which ones are going in at least the top two, but these are just my opinions, and... Well, you're welcome to have an argument with me in the comments on this video. So, we're just going to start with the albums in order of how I seem to have downloaded the pictures for them, as you can see at the bottom here. So, let's start with California, okay? I'm instantly going to put this into Don't Bother. Now, don't shit yourselves. I do think it's a good album if you're a fan, right? Um... If you're a fan, you should probably check the album out. But I guarantee once we get through this list, and once you, if you do end up listening to all these albums um, from better from best to worst, I think you'll find that will be the one that will be the one that you probably won't go back to, okay? So what we're gonna do next is super fans only. You know, if you're <laughs> if you've if you've followed Blink your whole life or their whole life, I suppose, then um, you're definitely going to know uh, Cheshire Cat. You know, that that was an album that came off the back. It was kind of an amalgamation of B Buddha and new songs. Buddha was the EP or the demo album, basically, that came out before they got a record deal. And then they went for Cheshire Cat, which is basically half of the album, or almost half the album, is better recorded songs um, that were already on Buddha. So... You know, we probably should have Buddha in this list as well, but because most of it, or some of it, is on Cheshire Cat, I just decided to leave that one out. So yeah, Cheshire Cat's definitely up there. You know, it's 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 got to be on the um, the tier list. But I'm just going to skip to the end here because I don't want to start fully negatively. What we're going to go with is Dude Ranch. That is required listening for not just for Blink fans, but for any pop punk or even like fans of modern guitar rock because it was basically it was bling with it to kind of finding out what they could do but with no money like they almost had obviously had more money than they had with uh, Buddha and uh, Cheshire Cat but Dude Ranch they had uh, very little time very little um, instruments and gear at their disposal in fact I'm pretty sure they recorded Dude Ranch over like eight days or something like that. I would have to check that. But Dude Ranch has got some absolutely amazing songs in it. And I think it's like the Beatles in the way that... Uh, okay, don't shit yourself. I didn't just compare Blink-182 to the Beatles. But I just mean that there's some songs in it that are so good. Like Waggy, Emo, Pathetic, Voyeur. That are just a, a new hope that I think... If they'd uh, revisited those songs later, when they actually had the um, finances, let's say, to re-record them um, in a professional studio with a great engineer, Tom Lord Algae, I think it was, that did uh, the later stuff, or some of the later stuff, then those songs could have been as popular, if not more so, than things like What's My Age Again, Feeling This, blah, blah, blah. So I'm putting Dude Ranch in the second tier there, required listening. All right, if you disagree, let me know. Uh, the whole reason I'm doing this is for uh, the purposes of uh, chat. So let's get it on. Right, what I'm gonna do here now is put, take off your pants and jacket. Where do you think that's gonna go? Give them a spin, God tier, no. I'm going to go required listening again because I just don't think that Take Off Your Pants and Jacket was God tier. I think it was amazing. 
and I think it was um, it could have been better but it to me it, having known them since Dude Ranch and um, Enema of the State it just felt like a B-sides album to Enema of the State I just felt like they were putting some songs in there that were maybe trying to change direction a little bit too quickly and anybody who knows Boxcar Racer will know what I'm talking about there there's things like Stay Together for the Kids, Story of a Lonely Guy um, Adam's Song sorry Adam's Song was on um, <laughs> Adam's song was on uh, Enemy of the State. But you know, there's a couple of slower songs on Take Off Your Pants and Jacket that I'm just like, really? Maybe should have kept it upbeat for the whole album. They're still great songs, but I just felt like they could have ro rode that wave uh, for a little bit longer. So, what we're going to move on to next is the Mark, Tom and Travis show, which is always a point of contention for some uh, Blink fans because. People think this should be God tier because it basically is the greatest hits, but I'm going to put it on Give It A Spin or Give Them A Spin because there's two albums on this um, level because they're not studio recorded tracks. They're all pre-recorded. There's no new material on this, on this album. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's all live versions of songs from um, Dude Ranch, Enem of the State and obviously the banter the jokes in this album just defined Blink that's why they did it you know they only did this album because of the jokes you know and I mean they weren't to they definitely didn't do it to show off how good they are as a live band because I think anybody who knows them who's ever seen them live like I mean really live not just on like the MTV awards and shit like that I'm talking about really live you know that Tom doesn't sing like that and you know that they don't play like that they don't play that tightly like this it's one of many live albums over history that has been heavily edited in post to the point where I actually think that the only live thing there might be the drums and well I think it's definitely the drums but might also be a bit of the bass, well, most of the bass. Mark's a pretty solid bass player, to be fair. But the guitar playing and the vocals are just questionable when you actually see them live. But on this, they just seemed a bit tight. So I'm just like, well, if it is a live album, or if they want to mark it as a live album, You've got to take into consideration that there's been a lot of post-editing going on. Right, let's move on. I'm going to put in Neighbourhoods next. Um, into the experimental category. And I'm not saying this is a bad or weird... It's definitely not a weird album, but it's weird in terms of Blink, if you know what I mean. Um, it was definitely Tom kind of trying to work out how to bridge the gap between what Blink was already established at doing and what he actually wanted to do which as we all know turned out to be Angels and Airwaves but it didn't really work for all of us as a Blink album you know what I mean it was just I mean it did it was it was enjoyable to listen to but it didn't have the fun factor of the first well two well three albums um, I'm talking about studio albums now, you know. Didn't have the fun factor of Dude Ranch, Enemy of the State, and Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. Um, and obviously, uh, Cheche Cat before that. So, I guess four albums. So, that's why I'm putting Neighbourhoods in the experimental phase. It seemed to be a very transitional point in, in Tom's life. I'm not entirely sure that Mark was on board with what was going on at the point, but he did contribute a lot lyrically. And songwriting and uh, songwriting, and uh, as a songwriter to the album, and um, so I think emotionally they both got a lot out of it, but I just think musically it was too much of a deviation to really put it up there as a classic Blink album. Do you know what I mean? I mean, what I would say about Neighborhoods is that Travis Barker just shines on it. He just that's one of my favorite albums to listen to when I want to listen to Travis his his playing might have saved that record um, high points of the album Ghosts on the Dance Floor 
uh, helicopter and uh, oh, nah, I'm just going to leave it at those two just now. Now, now some people are not going to like this, but nine, I'm going to put there with super fans only because just didn't buzz me. It was almost, I know Neighbourhoods was the last proper Blink album before Tom left. Well, it was the last album before Tom left. But this one was like, I just felt they were trying to claw back something that they could never get without Tom. Like, Tom's either in the mood to party or he's not. You can't force that. But then they got Matt in to try and, like, I know he does the same thing as Tom. He sings and he plays the guitar. But he's not even an amazing singer, and yet he's an even worse guitar player. I'm not having to go at Matt Skiba because he's phenomenal in the in terms of uh, Alkaline Trio. But with this album, I just feel like Matt, nah, no way. So I think it's obvious where we're going now. In fact, no. Let's just save that one. We're going to put Enema of the State. I think we know where we're going here. Enema of the State is God tier. Uh, two of the biggest sets on it, All the Small Things and What's My Age Again. And even the B-sides on this album, which, not even B-sides, you know, B-sides to me are a song that goes on the B-side of a single. Because that's the whole reason why it was called a B-side. Back in the Beatles and Rolling Stones days, when they had a vinyl 7-inch, um, you'd put, one song on one side and a B-side on the other to make it worthwhile people buying the single as opposed to just buying the album. So B-sides are not really relevant in uh, the internet age. Um, so I'm just going to use the term album track because all the small things, What's Me Age Again and Adam's Song were singles off this album. But they're not even my favourite songs on it. you got Dumbweed. You've got uh, Going Away to College. You've got uh, Anthem, part, uh, Anthem Part 1, I suppose you'd say. And But my favourite one is actually Don't Leave Me. And weirdly, as much as I miss Tom in Blink, when I look back, some of my, most of my favourite songs from the early days were actually Mark singing them, which is weird because I miss Tom and the live environment and the whole attitude of the band, but I miss Mark's, you know, well, he was writing the songs anyway, so I don't know what happened when Tom left, but Mark just didn't have his own, didn't have a spark that he had with going away to college and Don't Leave Me. Obviously we had Aliens Exist on that album as well, which was, was Tom. Um, but you got what? What else we got? We got Mutt, um, Dysentery Gary, which is fucking hilarious, especially since that's my name. I love that song. Right, let's move on. The last one we've got is the self-titled album. Now, where am I going to put that? Obviously not. It wasn't that experimental. It certainly wasn't God tier. I was tempted to put it in required listening, but I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with give him a spin. Because I just don't think it was a, it was up there as much as Enema, Dude Ranch and Take Off Your Pants and Jacket were. Um yeah. But it still had some great the the thing about the, the self titled album is it's an experience within itself. Like you need to listen to the album from front to back because it's like a musical movie, which most of my favourite albums are, like The Colour and Shape, Morning Glory, uh, Nevermind, Soundgarden's uh, Down in the Upside, Rage Against the Machine's first album. It's structured in a way, and I'm back to talking about Blink's self-titled album here, it's structured in a way that it, it, it wants you to listen to the whole thing because it has a beginning, a middle and an end. And although it has one of my least favourite Blink songs on it, I Miss You, because, I mean, the reason it's not my favourite Blink album is because, uh, Blink song, is because it's not Blink. It doesn't sound like Blink when it to you at all. It's a very accessible song for people who, 
Remember in the office, the American office, where uh, Robert California was complaining about uh, the Black Eyed Peas, and he said, the rock music for people who don't like rock music, the pop music for people who don't like pop music, and the hip hop for people who don't like hip hop, that's the way I look at I miss you. You know, people who listen to my I miss you who aren't fans of pop punk, they might think that that's what pop punk sounds like. And therefore, you know, it's like the only exception by Paramore. You know, that's like a first dance kind of song. As I miss you probably could be as well. Um, but it's not definitive of the band's style. So that's why I don't um, favour the self-titled album. There's a lot of stuff on there that you wouldn't play to somebody if it was like their first experience of Blink. Maybe things like Feeling This, because it's got the two lead vocals on it. Obviously, uh, you had the other single, uh, Always, which is a great song. And in a way, it's kind of the definitive modern Blink song. It's like it's almost like that album's Damn It, because it uses the same chord sequence and the same um, construction of the song. But it's just a little bit less ballsy. Do you know what I mean? It's a little bit overproduced for me. I do love Mark's chord playing on the bass on Always, but I just would never go to it, you know, as a main Blink song. What we really should add here is edging as well, but we'll wait until the next album comes out if they're gonna if there is if there is even gonna be be a new album. So that that concludes the video today. Thanks for listening, guys, and I will catch you soon. <laughs>